good evening give mr mehta a big round of applause he's come from uh, anand he has a 10 pm flight he has two more engagements in between uh, so always grateful to him for making his time for us and being here uh, you can take this and i'll take this and i'm short whichever yeah so they they will be able to remove some chairs looks like i need two chairs to sit but that's not it I, one is good enough for me uh, mr mehta uh, one day early jan i called naval and said uh, we must verticalize what we do in marketing and that's how the e4m healthcare marketing domain was born and you know uh, now we are doing a bfsi uh, marketing uh, conference a bfsi marketing awards because every sector has its nuances this is the third edition today of the bw uh, e4m healthcare marketing uh, summit and awards and health and well being have taken a bigger role in our lives uh, they're more top of mind post covid amul is about nutrition and in an interview 8 weeks back to business world you talked about how amul wants to take over the kitchen of, of every indian so nutrition and well being go in hand in hand what is amul doing to be able to make sure this new trend towards more consciousness towards health is catered from uh, the house of amul so we'd love your opening comments on that okay uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here uh, was a part of the jury also and the kind of uh, act event you put together was really fabulous and happy that you come to a stage where you're going to felicitate all the winners uh, the point you mentioned is actually very very important and particularly coming from a category like milk uh is it's it's very important because milk is associated with health it's associated with wellness it is associated with nutrition and also with taste and more importantly it's also associated with money every single household in india the single largest component of food you spend on in your budget in your month is on dairy products so that way for this particular product to deliver all the four or five aspects of taste health wellness nutrition energy and uh, the wellness is what the job is assigned to milk as a category so we at amula very conscious about it and the kind of products that we make the kind of attempt we make to highlight the goodness of milk first as a superfood as a very composite product and then also talk about the sub parts of it if somebody is interested in the energy part of it then milk comes in different forms of uh, fat content if somebody is looking at the lactose intolerance part of it then the product comes with a, with a feature that is fit fit for lactose intolerant people if somebody is looking for protein as a segment we are looking at protein part of it in product somebody is looking at products without sugar uh, we have product portfolio around that so all in all milk provides that opportunity not only to serve products in the liquid form but in the cultured form in the flavored form in the value added form the cheese the paneer the butter the ghee the chocolate uh, chocolates and the ice creams and so on and so forth so and the mithais and of course the indulgence part also which is a part of the overall requirement of household so this is this is the space we are looking at and very very closely focusing on the evolving customer customers across different uh, socio economic strata different life style cycle lifestyle age and uh, try to create a portfolio around that uh, which is very very comprehensive very composite and more importantly we have a mandate also to make the products available and affordable to all the indians so this is the kind of interesting challenge now let me i have a set of questions we sent it to your proof i have i have in internalized them but let me ask you some real questions see milk over the last decade lot of nutritionists uh, have put out a lot of content about milk how milk is carcinogenic some have gone to say that some have said it doesn't help in aid law weight loss it doesn't aid weight loss and hence over the last few years uh, almond milk soy milk oats milk have also become part of the daily kitchen of a lot of people right uh, there is an anti milk movement uh, what do you have to say about that Uh, I, as i mentioned it's a very very large category and milk is not just a uh, single largest product that we have uh, the sum total it's the largest agricultural product of india the value of milk is 10 lakh crores it is the total more than the total of wheat paddy pulses and guess together. what is the turnover of amul without googling take a guess why give you uh, 
we are giving a good quality coffee hamper to him. Though he went to Colombia recently, I, hopefully it matches that quality. And I hope you had nothing else apart from coffee in Colombia. Uh, yeah, that was the only part. Yes, I, otherwise I, I wouldn't hope. have come back. I, <laughs> yeah, but on a, so we'll give you a hamper, coffee hamper. What do you think is Amul's turnover? Any guess? Okay, I used to think it's fifty thousand crore, but it's more. It's it was last year seventy seven thousand crores. Mr. Khona, you can sit here. Uh, seventy seven thousand crores, and they have set up an ambitious target which I don't think is ambitious with seeing the growth of 1 lakh crore uh, turnover. So it's very large. It is more turnover than levers. Levers is close. 50, 60. Uh, now going to 60 plus. But so point is Amul is very, very large company. I mean, it's a cooperative, but in terms of its turnover. So also there is a movement of well-being where uh, there are different grades of milk. You know, so do you see a large enough target audience for that kind of price? Yeah. So uh, coming to the first point first, which is the anti-milk lobby. So there are a lot of people who want to attack milk and try to take away a share of the customers by pro perhaps misleading them, uh, trying to talk about the bad attributes of milk and trend, promoting the milk alternatives. So technically, when a product is not bovine origin, you can't call it milk. So since you mentioned almond milk, it's not almond milk, it can be called only almond beverage or a soya beverage or any other beverage. Yeah, it's not milk. So, uh, so, so this, is, this is where we as a milk lobby, because as I mentioned, milk is a source of nutrition for us as consumers, but a source of livelihood for millions of producers. And it's the largest agricultural crop. So we have to provide the right information to the customer, talk about the goodness of milk, uh, let the people who want to sell the alternatives do that because it's an open market. But you should not call milk. After all, denigrating milk as a category. Uh, so on their own, if the soya beverages can prove that they are good for the health of the customers or the well-being of those who want to consume, it's fine. Uh, but we are very clear that as per the food safety laws of the country, you can't call any product which is not bovine origin as milk. So you can see the brand names have now changed to soya beverage and almond beverage and so on. And then the customer takes a very conscious decision of buying any product, which is fine. So this is one. Talking about the grades of milk, yes, milk comes in variety of things. From skim milk, which is 0% fat and more than 9% uh, solid not fat, which is high quality uh, protein and calcium. Uh, to uh, buffalo milk, which is more than 7% fat and everything else in between. Uh, it is, uh, people w need milk for the taste part also, as much as the, uh, those who are calorie conscious. You will be surprised that the largest selling pack and the product is of very high fat. So this is where customers know the goodness of milk as a source of nutrition, as a source of energy, as a source of making ghee also from the surplus cream that you generate out of the milk. And that's what makes uh, the product uh, cutting across age group, income groups and across market segments. And uh, again, we did some surveys and found that people in the lower income segment consume the milk which has the highest fat. And some people who are very conscious of calories would buy a low fat milk. So this is the paradox of the market. You're looking at me no. when talking about conscious of calories. I'm <laughs> glad you're doing that. I am. Uh, now, tell us some consumer trends that are big enough for you to be able to uh, launch products with value addition to milk. I mean, you already talked about, you started doing, you know, Amul and pizza became synonymous. Uh, your dark chocolates have eaten ice creams. So you're doing a lot of products which are value added. You know, milk is the base, but you're adding. Now, what are the new products we should look forward to coming from Amul? Uh, I'll talk about two, three things. One is related to probiotics, second is to protein, and third is to organics, which are the three things which come top of my mind. Uh, one is, st let's start with probiotics. Now, post-COVID, everybody realized that importance of immunity. And you need a strong gut to have a strong immunity and fight off the diseases. And probiotics per se is a category which is supposed to be a very ex elite category, very expensive. A small bottle of 60 ml costs you 16, 17 rupees. Basically not afforded. And again, affordable to many. And again, having a lot of sugar and other things. So, one of the best carriers of probiotics is buttermilk. And we sell close to 3 million liters of buttermilk in simple pouches every day across the country. We did a very, very dramatic thing. Overnight, that bacteria in that buttermilk, the regular pouch, chash, 
is converted into probiotic. So all the goodness of probiotic bacteria available at a price point of just 30 rupees a liter. No change in the price, the goodness of probiotic, proven probiotic bacteria added. And since the last three, four months, we have started this across the country and consumers are getting benefit. More than two crore consumers are getting benefit of probiotic without paying anything extra. So this is the innovation which the country requires, but not necessarily we charge for it. But again, the concern and objective is to look after the health of the country, strengthening our immunity and making India a stronger nation. So this is one thing which we have done and it is really gaining momentum in a very big way. Uh, second is protein. The country is looking for protein sources. Amul is the largest player of milk in the country. So obviously milk has 3% protein. So we are the largest protein player by default. We have pro in pani protein in form of paneer, in cheese and so on. But we realize that if we want to get into this in a space in a big way and make people aware that each one of us, irrespective of our age, we require one gram of protein per kg of our body weight every day. Now, if this is it, when we want Indians to do a maths, that if your weight is 60 kg, you need 60 grams of protein, where is that protein coming from? You may be a vegetarian, you may be non-vegetarian, you may be eating several things in your diet, but if you do the maths, we will find most of us are heavily deficient in protein. You can't substitute the requirement of the country by importing the kala dabbas, the black protein, black dabbas selling protein powder, which is of at times dubious quality. So, since we are the largest manufacturer of cheese in the country, paneer in the country, we have the best quality way. From that way, we have started isolating the best quality protein with the highest BCAS ratio and started selling high protein lassi, high protein buttermilk. We are coming out with a range of high protein yogurt, high protein cookies, high protein ice cream, high protein milkshakes, high protein milk and so on. So, very soon you will have a bottle of 200 ml milk which will give you 30 grams of protein. And buttermilk already at 25 rupees, you get 15 gram of protein at 200 rupees. So all these, pro uh, all these products we are trying to bring in the market, everyone would get a protein source in a regular product they are consuming throughout the day without depending on the shakes and the, the powder protein which is available in the market. So this is what is the next level of our effort and you will see this, uh, all the products being launched over the next few months and that will make a big difference in the availability of good quality protein at an affordable price in a tasty format uh, across the country around the year. And the third is the moment on organics. We all want to eat food without any chemicals, without any pesticides, without any fertilizers and so on. Uh, that unfortunately is not there and if, if organics are available, they are very, very expensive. So we have got onto this space now. We have launched a range of 8 to 10 products in organics, which is organic wheat flour, organic rice, organic dal, besan. We soon launch organic sugar, jaggery, masalas and so on. So that is what you mentioned. Everything you consume in your kitchen, in your household, will be Amul organic in a very, very affordable manner, but definitely adhering to highest standards of quality and lab tested right from sourcing to the finished products. Absolutely. I do contribute to that volume of buttermilk. I do. I turned vegetarian a couple of months back and, you know, uh, I do consume some of your product. And uh, I can say that uh, Amul has been... Uh, launching new products at a very fast pace, especially in the last six years. Almost every quarter there is a new product range in some new product category or a kind of uh, sub-variants which are premium in an existing category. Now, what are the trends you see in health and well-being? You talk to probiotic, you talk to protein, and you talk to organic. All three are very real movements. Okay. Uh, what are the other trends that are happening in the health and well-being domain that the audience should be taking note of? Uh, one is, another one to add on to this is free from anything. So, lactose-free products, sugar-free products. Now, these products have also started gaining ex 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 acceptance. So, we are developing a range of products uh, around this category also. The third thing is, one more thing is, which is a catching on very, is people moving on from loose and unbranded to package and branded. Which means bra dramatic shifts happening not just in the fresh milk product category, but also paneer, also khoa, also mithai. So you need, I mean, people, mithai may be treated as an indulgence product. But if you are having mithai of bad quality, it gets into the space of bad health and obviously it's not good for the consumers. So we are launching a range of fresh mithais uh, in a variety of forms. 
and variety of uh, regional tastes and preferences, which would help uh, consumers get best quality mithai, uh, have the indulgence, but without compromising on the health part of it. And same thing, uh, fresh cheese, and, which is cottage cheese, paneer also is a trend which is catching on very much. And people moving from non-vegetarian find paneer as a very good form of uh, uh, food item which they can consume daily. And uh, that's another trend of it. Uh, then. Uh, Obviously, many other things which are not directly related to our business, uh, but in the space of uh, agricultural products like uh, the dairy snacks, the potato snacks, honey, all these things we are trying to bring in the goodness of what the farmer has to offer and the consumer is willing to try. And that is what our innovation is working on to variety of spaces. And then the indulgence part also, be it ice creams and innovating in various flavors and formats of ice creams and so on. So practically every single category or every single product that we operate in is very, very exciting. And the country is uh, in a stage right now to accept all possible forms of innovation. And uh, this is what we are trying to lead from the front, continuously innovating, developing new ideas, new products, trying out new concepts, and creating a portfolio around that. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. My last two questions, and then we can take. Now, the Amul brand over the years is a very trusted brand. In our surveys, in many other surveys, Amul has come up tops in terms of, and you know, food is a very high involvement category. Forget the price, it doesn't matter. Uh, how do you see Amul brand keeping pace uh, with the new consumer, with the millennials? Second is, uh, we've been talking for the last one decade about farm to fork. With what has happened in the e-commerce domain, uh, especially post-COVID in terms of, uh, you know, e-commerce becoming mainstream, uh, you are, as a company, uniquely positioned to make farm to folk reality. Give us some other product segments. You already given us two, three new product segments that are not in the public domain that Amul plans to enter over the next few months or years. Uh, the first part is uh, the strength of the brand and the core strength of the brand. I mean, we talked about numbers of, uh, say, close to 10 billion liters of milk that we handle in a year or the turnover of $9 billion that we have and the large number of consumer base and all that. But you are right in that point that, uh, I mean, while we say all these numbers, our currency is actually not milk. Our currency is trust. And this is a trust on which the Amul brand is standing. Trust of millions of our farmers who are owners, the 3.6 million farmers, and the billion customers who are there. So all that we do is wanting to build and strengthen on this trust uh, so that whatever we do uh, is seen from the perspective of not a product but a supporting or a support offering of an organization which is trying to cater to the keep both the segments happy, the producer as well as the consumer. Uh, in terms of reaching out to the young millennials, I mean, it is one of the most challenging tasks that we have had. Uh, there are a few things in our uh, content basket is what we keep on experimenting and innovating. And we realize that advertising to this segment will not work out. So you need to create suitable content which will help this generation engage with the brand and think it is a brand which he or she owns. And this is where you start building on the conversations and uh, take the message forward and the brand, the consumers become the brand ambassadors. The case in point is the dark chocolate thing which you just mentioned. Now, we as the largest brand of dark chocolates with a variety of products which is uh, now quite a formidable range. But if you ask any person in India, how did you come to know of Amul dark chocolate? Uh, it will not be through any advertisement. It will not be in through any other means of communication except word of mouth. So we built this entire portfolio because one customer liked a product. And very good. Very good presence in retail stores. Yeah, and you went to the retail store. The retail store was not stocking Amul chocolates. We were very bad in chocolate category 10 years back. But because you wanted this chocolate, because your friend told you, the retailer was forced to keep it, and today he has a range of chocolates available across this. So it was the pull of the customer with zero rupees spent on advertising. And it's the word of mouth which created. So we realized that these are some of the categories where you cannot do advertising on uh, billboards and print and TV like we do for every product. This here the customer has to be your uh, evangelist. He will recommend or she will recommend to his friends and the products will build up. Uh, the e-com channel is very interesting. Amul was perhaps the first company in India to set up a direct-to-consumer cyber store, as we used to call it way back in 98, 99. 
we were in 100 cities of India delivering ice creams to your doorstep along with the butter and cheese. And this was before actually e-commerce came into the country, before payments through credit cards were accepted on the net and so on and so forth. So we did this for 10, 12 years. Then with the formal e-commerce coming in, we uh, started working on those, with those channels. And now we are coming back, we are back with our own shop.amul.com e-commerce channel in which we will be able to uh, supply directly all these products I mentioned uh, through our dedicated warehouses. Now, a biggest e-commerce company in India would have one warehouse or one DC per state. We have at the moment 83 branch offices, means 83 dry warehouses, 83 chilled warehouses, 83 frozen warehouses, and 98 dairy plants. So we are at a radius of 200 kilometers of every single city and town of India, already there. Now all this is being made e-commerce compliant, and today if you order something, in Bombay if you order Mithai by 12 o'clock, a packet of 500 gram Mithai can be delivered to your doorstep by evening. So this is the kind of uh, I, uh, technique and technology we are building into our operations across the country which make us a very large e-com player also. I mean, we call it omni-channel because we are also there in physical Holy. distribution retail. So this is what uh, we are trying to do to get closer to customer without charging anything. But more importantly, the entire range of products would be easily available uh, through this format, uh, apart from the million outlets and 15,000 distributors who sell the products. But Thank let you. me tell you, every single liter of milk which each of our 3.6 million farmer gives uh, is on the common software. So the farmer gets an SMS the moment he delivers the milk with the fat SNF percentage and the price which is credited, amount which is credited to his or her bank account. To every single packet of butter cheese we sell in a million outlets is on the same software. So we are a highly integrated uh, cow to consumer company on an uh, technology platform and this will now be consumer enabled to make it fully uh, uh, available to everyone across the country. Thank you Mr. Mehta. Please give Mr. Mehta a big round of applause for being very for being very specific with his inputs and uh, relevant inputs. If there are one or two questions we can quickly take them. Uh, one question. Right. That's from my uh, Kanchan is a senior editor with us. One of our uh, best writers. Uh, hi. Uh, so I would like to know how much sales you are expecting from your own D2C channel. She is looking for a story for me for him tomorrow. <laughs> Jain Mehta says 20,000 crores will come from e-commerce. I, I wish. <laughs> but on a serious no, note… See, see again, uh, for us it's one channel which will help us actually uh, it sell the innovative products. The high protein lassi buttermilk which I mentioned is not sold through any physical store at the moment. It is only available through e-commerce channel because the customer knows that this products, I mean he or she is used to buy uh, such products on the e-com. Uh, so that is also giving us a good channel. In the last three months we have got more than 100,000 customers who are our regular customers buying online. So we are looking at a very, very ambitious number because I mentioned if we want to set up a warehouse, I mean two, three warehouses per state, uh, the numbers can be very, very good. So, uh, but currently, how much comes from e-commerce? Total, because we deal with uh, the other e-com companies also, uh, the Qcoms and the e-com companies and all. So, close to about five percent of our total turnover comes from uh, that space. But once we that do is it itself, four thousand crores. So, once we do it ourselves, the numbers can go up multiple times. Because in this case, the consumer will not have to pay any delivery charge. He will get a wider range available and closer to everyone, everywhere. So almost every PIN code will be covered. So Jay? can we expect this current revenue to double in the next? Yeah, it should. Be. It's easily possible. Yes, it's possible. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Please give Mr. Mehta a big round of applause. Thank you, Kanchan, for asking that question. <laughs>